Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup where we cover the news from the last few days and then uh, preview tomorrow's series in the LEC. Regular, uh, I mean, four major region play starts again tomorrow for the weekend and then MSI is next week. Um, news. So, uh, a lot of moves by Immortals. Immortals being a team that really struggled in the LCS this past split and I'm happy to see them make some moves. Now, how do I feel about them? Um, you know, I'm not really too happy with these moves. I think they're not identifying the problems. Um, we saw towards the end of the split, you know, a blaze olive, um, hope he's doing better mentally. I think he might be based on his tweets. Um, I mean, I don't follow him, but I think I've seen some in my, um, feed people liking them and things like that, that he's, he might be doing better now that he is no longer in, um, in pro. Um, and when Belulu came in, the team looked very good. Belulu looks like he should have been on the team right away. And I'm not going to harp on the fact that I was calling for that since week one, but whatever. Um, now, the move that ma the team made was inserting treats into the lineup. Treats, we've heard, you've, I'm sure you've heard of him. He's been on co streams all, all spring long. Um, he's been on co streams for longer than that, even. Um, replacing Fleshy. So, in my opinion, I thought Fleshy, outside of Belulu's few games that he played, was the best player on Immortals last split. I thought Fleshy looked fine, um, given the circumstances, and given the fact that he'd only played in the TCL before this, I thought he played fantastically. Um, replacing him with Treats, I'm not saying Treats is worse than Fleshy, I'm just saying that I don't think that fixes the problem. So, Treats, 2.9 KDA, 74.2 KP, 2.5 Vision Score per minute, 1.5 Wards placed per minute, clears about two wards every five minutes. Um, what? 0.29 vision wards per minute. Um, eight champions played in 18 games with SK last year. SK also being a sus team in 2022. Now, Fleshy's numbers with Immortals, a team that I would say was about as good as SK in 2022. Uh, 2 3 KDA, 66.3 KP, so not as involved fighting wise, but I thought vision wise, Fleshy did a fantastic job. Um, 327 vision score per minute, 1.38 wards per minute, um, cleared about two wards every five minutes, and uh, had two vision wards every five minutes. Six champions in 18 games, you'd like a wider champion pool though. Um, so, I mean, that's a move. Uh, I could see Treats being a shot caller for the team. He seems very insightful about the game, and maybe that's what they think they're missing um, to help Kenvi, a young jungler, um, and uh, Belulu who's been around for a while, tactical, probably doesn't need the help in that regard, but I just think maybe that's a reason to do it. Um, now in top lane, Revenge has left. So Revenge is out. They have not announced a replacement. Revenge had a 1.7 KDA, 8.1 CS per minute, 55.2 KP. I think this is unfortunate. Um, Revenge definitely has mixed opinions about him. Um, you know, some people think he stinks. Some people think he's he's good. He's just on a bad team. I think he dies a lot, but he's also on a bad team. He probably tries too hard. I do really enjoy the fact that he tries to branch out and do content every week on Twitter. Um, even if it is a short few minute video, I think that that is more effort than the majority of players do. And I think that is very important. Um, 361 gold per minute, 469 damage per minute. On average, he was down 175 gold, up 1 CS, down 115 XP. Uh, five solo kills in 18 games, played eight champions in the LCS. Now, for Immortals Challengers, they have ADD. ADD has played in the LCK, LPL, and was uh, the Isaris Gaming World's 2022 top. The guy that played Teemo top, yes. Now, I believe that ADD is not major region quality at all but i will say i think that he has one of the most diverse champion pools in the world um and one could say well he doesn't play it at the highest level so is it diverse like he's doing he's playing it at a lower level of play so can he really play these champions at a high level this and that but i think that that champion pool provides an opportunity for internal scrims to get really interesting with matchups. And um, I think there's a lot of value in that personally. Um, 2-2 KDA, 7-7 CS per minute, 49 KP in the uh, North American Challenger League uh, spring split. These numbers aren't great, right? You're below 8 CS per minute. 
Not only that, you're an import and you're in the academy system and you're not in more than half of the fights. So these aren't great. 388 gold per minute, 539 damage per minute. Actually, it's pretty high given the fact that he's not in the fights to get kills. Um, down 50 gold, 2 CS, 215 XP, 11 solo kills in 30 games, played 14 champions. Like I said, the champion pool is where ADD has a lot of value. I do not expect them to go with an import top laner now that they have treats because it's Balulu and treats is my hypothesis. So we'll see who domestically they find for top lane. Um, RNG. So RNG were a tire fire. It started with Ming being out. Zhao Hu's gone and Ming was a free agent and he comes back and Tabe gets fired and then they fire another coach mid split. They're going with Tang Wan. They have Angel, but there's a rumor that Angel's just a video coach and he got screwed and thought he was going to play, but he was a video coach and this and that. And then they fire another coach and then they fire another coach and they're on their fourth coach. Um, a mess. I do not think Angel is the reason this team did bad. A lot of people criticize Angel, and maybe some of that is he may have played poorly. But to say that the situation was stable and like an environment to thrive in, I think would be complete bullshit. Um, 3.9 KDA, 8.3 CS per minute, 61.3 KP. These numbers aren't great, right? He's not. He's in, involved in just over three out of every five kills and still not getting farm. Um, 398 gold per minute, 561 damage per minute, 13 champions, 28 games. Um, listening to Angel's, uh, well, not listening, but reading a translated uh, Weibo, Weibo post on um, Twitter, it sounds like maybe mentally he, he was struggling. And like I said, I don't think this environment was good for him. Um, Tang Wan is the player that played the other games for RNG when they were deciding who to play. Um, and he struggled as a rookie mightily um 1.8 kda 7.7 cs per minute 63.9 kp 336 gold per minute 385 damage per minute like that's like carry jungler level damage not mid laner damage uh five champions in nine games so the rumor is and you take this for what it is a lot of people are hoping for rng doing b rng doing b rng doing b okay now um, in my opinion, you have Dune B, you have Cryon, and you have Owen 16. And Owen 16 is me being hyperbolic. I don't think they go Owen 16 if they don't get Dune B or Cryon. But I do think they don't make the playoffs. The, based on how poorly they played, I, well, maybe they do make the playoffs. They did end up, 10 out of 17 teams make it. Let's put it this way. I don't think that they're actually a world's contender if they don't get Dune B and they don't even get Cryon in mid. Um, the rumor, somebody said a four letter player was going to play mid that started with the letter M. The only player that comes to mind is Mole. I don't think Mole is very good. So if they go with Mole, that hyperbolic 016 angle is alive and well. Um, some people even suggest is Ming going to roll swap. I think that's an 0 16 angle. So I don't know what they're going to do there. Zhao Bei was the coach towards the end of the split. He was an analyst and he had to be coach. Um, going 20 and 12 over the last two two uh, years on the coaching staff. Um, Sin is still listed as the head coach despite not being the head coach. They're the only one left. Um, 65, 48, and 17 over their career as a coach. I mean, I, it's a disaster. It's, it's just simply a disaster speaking of disasters you have fpx um fpx lele was their rookie support to start the split he struggled um well i wouldn't say mm, that's not fair the team struggled i thought his numbers looked okay 3-1 kda 81 2 kp so four out of every five kills lele was involved in um to say that he wasn't part of the reason why they did anything would be wrong um six champions in 15 games Chow Chow is who they brought in. I thought it was pretty late, given the fact that Chow Chow used to be an 80 carry, and the 80 carry support meta was a thing. You'd like them to bring in Chow Chow immediately, or if somebody do it, they didn't. Um, and now they're deciding to go with Chow Chow, I assume, for summer. Uh, we'll see if they sign somebody else. But 3-3 KDA, 74-4 KP, 11 champions, 24 games. Um, the... the, the 
duo with LWX did look a hell of a lot better with Chow Chow than Lele, but I, I think that this team has bigger issues. Similar to the Immortals thing, I think there are bigger issues than support here. Um, now, as far as sneak peek for tomorrow, predictions, I'm 312 and 148 on the year. Um, LEC, excuse me, uh, playoffs, best of five. Winner of this plays uh, Vitality. Winner of that plays BDS. Um, day after day after day. I do think that there is going to be, a, it's a, well, it's a tough task to win three best of fives in three consecutive days. Uh, I said this in a previous video. Somebody had questioned it on Discord last time I said it, so I'm going to specify. I don't think there's ever been somebody that had to win three best of fives on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days like this. So it's a tall order. I think the only angle that one of these teams has to winning is 3-0-ing tomorrow. Um, or even 3-0-ing Saturday. Some time to get a couple extra hours of rest, a couple hours to prepare. Um, instead of a five-game series, a three-game series would be huge. Like one of those hour-and-a-half specials that we think about, right? We've seen it before. Um, Mad Lions are 3-6, and six, G2 6-3. and three. Matchup, uh, they played in week three of the spring split. G2 would win. Broken Blade dominated on the Olaf. I think this also was a game where Caps went off on Silas. It was just a disgusting game. Um, Broken Blade going 11-2 and 4, 27% of damage. Chasing the loss went 2-7-3, 22% of damage on a Jace. Um, so, if uh, that happens again tomorrow, G2 could 3-0. And in that case... That helps them. A lot of people are saying Mad should throw um, because that gives G2 extra time, that same situation, and then G2 can, has a better chance to beat uh, BDS. In my personal opinion, the way I view that is if G2 needed Mad Lion, I don't believe, I'm not going to, don't want to say who I'm predicting to win, but I don't think um, G2 need Mad Lions to throw necessarily. Um, and if that end up being the case, then G2 shouldn't be projected to beat Vitality or BDS anyways. Um, if you think that Mad Lion should throw to have a better chance of winning, I just think that that doesn't make sense. If, if Mad Lions can beat G2, then G2 is not going to beat Vitality or BDS the way BDS are playing. Um, this matchup. Mad Lions need to flip heads on bot lane. That hasn't happened a lot in spring. It happened a lot in winter. That's why they have so many championship points. Um, would it suck if Mad Lions finished second in back-to-back -back splits and didn't go to MSI? Yeah, I think it would. Um, it would. I know a lot of people hate Mad Lions, which I think is just cringe as fuck. But um, finishing second in both splits, I would say that's a pretty good team, right? Um if G2 finished second in both splits, or Koi, well, probably not Koi, but, um, you know, Vitality, if they finished second in both splits, people would look at it differently, and, um, you know, they see Mad Lions struggle at Worlds, and they say whatever, but they kind of forget how well Mad Lions did at MSI. So, it's like, okay, well, yeah, they've had some low lows internationally, but they've also had some pretty good highs. Um, so, that's kind of a thing. I mean... We'll see what happens. Uh, I think that this is a uh, this is a thing. This is a matchup. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And thank you for watching.